Freestyle Travel. Hey everybody, uh, it's the Freestyle Travel Show. I'm your host, Kenny Flannery. <laughs> I got some beer. And uh, today's episode, I got an awesome guest. I got uh, Zane Lamprey. Uh, I'm stoked. Uh, if you don't know who Zane Lamprey is, uh, you, you might actually. Uh, he's been on Drinking Made Easy, Three Sheets, shows um, where he went around the world drinking different booze and stuff so it's kind of similar to me uh we get into uh kind of how we uh linked up because i've got a show called hopping where i drink a bunch of beer and meet people and also i make my own backpacks and he makes his own backpack so it's just like natural i'm like i gotta get in touch with this guy so i've actually been in touch with him for the past year or so he uh, backed my kickstarter for hopping and we were finally able to meet tonight. He's doing a stand-up tour. Uh, he's a stand-up comedian as well, on top of all these other like awesome booze shows that he's been doing. Um, and he had a show here in Reno. So this is the first chance to actually meet in person. So super cool, actually. We're backstage in between his like VIP uh, Q&A. It's a lot of acronyms. <laughs> uh, people came early to the show to uh, ask him questions on stage. Uh, in between that and the actual show, uh, we're in the green room backstage and just shooting the shit, talking about stuff. So um, yeah, uh, it was it was pretty cool actually. I was glad to finally meet him, and uh, he's awesome. So we're gonna get into that, and uh, after the I don't even know you can call it an interview. We're just chatting. Uh, after that, I'll tell you about my travels since the last episode. I'm uh, drinking some Reno beer. We're at Record Street Brewery, but I'm drinking Revision. Uh, also good beer. They gave me a free four-pack uh, the other day. Uh, but Record Street was awesome. So, yeah, I'll get into all my travels and all that stuff. But without further ado, here's Zane Lamprey, buddies. I want to introduce uh, Kenny Flannery, like you guys don't know who he is. This is about Kenny, what are we talking about? Cheers! Like, it's been so weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'm doing this interview right before I go on stage, so I should probably end this and let him do this. Okay, go. Yeah. On a rainy Reno day. <laughs> a, it's a rainy minute. Hey, yeah. Well, thanks for being on the show. My pleasure. Do you, do you, do you need to check levels, or do you just, you just are good, you just know? I'm good, okay. I know. It's so actually what I went to school for, and now uh, oh, got it. I hitchhike around the world, so. I'm these are the ones that, I just bought these. These oh, are the yeah? ones I was telling you about. You know why they're so good? They record internally. So if everything screws up, we still got it. It's oh, like right. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that. It's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, that's why I bought them. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> So a little background. Um, so I know you from Drinking Made Easy okay. and Three Sheets and just watching those shows. And then I started my show hopping, where I uh, like hitchhike to breweries <laughs> and drink beer. Yeah. By the way, how long have you been doing that for? You kickstarted that. I kickstarted it uh, twice. So the first season we filmed right at the end of 2019 into 2020. Yeah. <laughs> so we barely. How much did you guys there. get up the first Kickstarter? The first Kickstarter. Uh, I'm not going to remember, but I think a few thousand bucks or something. Okay. It wasn't crazy. The yeah. second one was um, closer to 10,000, okay. um, which afforded this camera was the main expense. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I backed one of those. Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually what happened was I think it was after the first one. I knew who you were and I'd seen your show, but then I was filming at Wilderness in Arizona in Phoenix. With John? Um, no, it Patrick? was this guy who ended up moving to Australia. He doesn't work there Oh, anymore. okay. Got it. Uh, Chase was his name. Yeah, he's a good guy. But um, I saw <laughs> I saw that you were there. There was like some tweet or something that you oh. were an event and had to do with the adventure. So I had okay. I have an apparel brand called Adventure, A D V three N T U R E. So it's like adventure with the the first E is a three because we plant three trees with every purchase. And then you don't have to shoot the whole thing. You just yeah. okay. You know okay okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you knew like okay. No, it's up to you. Whatever you want to do. Um, sorry, I have Jesse who yeah. just started for me. Basically, it's your like first day, right? Yeah. Uh, Sweet. So he's my new uh, audio video. We have to come up with a title. Uh, <laughs> social media, just making sure like shooting, producing my podcast, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. he's he's joining me on this run, which is Reno, Sacramento, Santa Rosa, uh, San Carlos, which is Palo Alto okay. area, and then uh, Berkeley. So, um, and I, so I have an apparel brand called Adventure. Uh, we plant three trees with every purchase. It was kind of an outdoor brand. Yeah. And uh, people kept asking for Pleplius. Pleplius is this guy. 
Yeah. So people kept asking for stuff with him on it to the point where we would sell like, you know, like for every 10 t-shirts, adventure t-shirts we'd sell, yeah. we'd sell 100 Pleplius t-shirts. We made him his own little store inside Adventure, and then that started doing better than Adventure. Like, why are we not <laughs> listening? Like, you gotta- To the market, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, you gotta read the writing on the wall. So at some point we're just like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna be, um, we're gonna, we, all we did was change the name to Pleplius. So we kickstarted it to, to start the company, and then we did well, two- Well, your Kickstarter made like a million bucks on like a super sweet Well, one point, 1. 1.8 million, but who's counting? Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. on the Adventure hoodie, yeah. which is like a, a multi-purpose hoodie made for traveling and adventures, had a lot of pockets and Koozie other pocket, features. Turn yeah, into a exactly. Pillow, stuff like so, that. And so we launched that, that kicked off the company. Then we took on investors. So we have 1,500 investors that have invested anywhere from 200 to a hundred thousand dollars, whatever. And Are those the Kickstarter backers? No, that's or? that's that's an it's an equity. Um, it's called a Reg CF. It's a crowdfunding for equity. So rather right. than getting like a product, you got you got you get stock in the company. Gotcha. So we have fifteen hundred investors, investors that we needed to kind of tell them, hey, I know you guys invested in venture in adventure, but now it's called Pleplius and just trust us, this is the right move so to do. So you're still gonna make the hoodie, you make a we still make we too. still make it all. We still make all the stuff. It's just now we have the monkey logo instead yeah. of the adventure logo. And and we have it um, uh, the, if you saw out there, Pleplius booth used to right. be the adventure booth. Now we have Pleplius, and so we have Trent out there who is at the booth. Because we're an online company, he's people get to actually put their hands on things and yeah. see how nice, like our backpacks and our jackets and stuff like that. So the backpack and the the hoodie, those are the two main like innovative products. Because I mean, you're like you're wearing yeah. a t-shirt with the, the logo. Right. That's right. The... Yeah, 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 yeah. So the the backpack, um, the hoodie. Um, and then we have our jacket, so our Cascade Windbreaker. Gotcha. That is made from recycled water bottles. Uh, so, yeah. this is what kind of put it over the top. Like, I wanted to meet you finally. Okay. Because I designed another Kickstarter I did. I designed a backpack that turns into a bivy tent. Like, okay. the, the frame of the backpack becomes tent poles. Okay. And I was like... Have you made it? I made it. I did a Kickstarter. I made not a ton of them, over 100. I've sold them all myself, which is okay. a mistake. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> shut up. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah, yeah. It took months to make a hundred. <laughs> You've <laughs> sewn them all yourself? Yeah. On an industrial sewing machine? In a garage in Mississippi this time of year. How many, <laughs> how long does it take to take to make one? Um, if I were to sit down and make one at a time, it'd be like 15 hours or so. But I was, you know, I was making all the straps one day and yeah. then all the bottoms one day and just pulling my hair out. Cause I actually, I've been living out of my backpack for 15 years, traveling yeah. around the world. So for me to stay in one spot for like a Can month. You a picture of this thing or a video? Uh, yeah, I can show you. Is it you. being used as our, as oh, our, okay, got yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can that camera is actually his phone. Yeah, got <laughs> yeah. it, okay. All right, this is, that's, I want to see that. That's amazing. Yeah. How many did you, did you sell on Kickstarter? On Kickstarter, it was like 60 or 70, mm -hmm. but I was like, all right, I might as well make a hundred just to buy stuff in bulk. Got it. So I'm still, I sold one the other day. Just like, I kind of, I don't market it too much. Like, what, what we're doing right now, what do they sell for? Uh, 350. Okay. And it's super ultra light, so it weighs less than a pound. So people who are like hiking the PCT, it's crazy. It, yeah. it weighs less than a pound. And it's a backpack. And, it, and, and a it's tent. a it's a backpack that holds stuff. Yeah. You take the stuff out, and then it becomes a tent. Yeah, I could potentially give it to you, and then you wouldn't know it turned into a tent unless I told you. Like it's but, sort of. But I will like know that. that there's like a rigid part to it because they're the, the poles. Which is the frame of the backpack okay, that right. you'd have anyways. Now it's sort of the. It weighs reason. less than a pound? Uh, it's like 15 ounces and 15.8 uh, ounces or crazy. something. That's crazy. Yeah, that was you, kind of the whole thing. I think even my, so I have my backpack, I have a small backpack and a big backpack that attach together. And I came up with, it, with this when I was in Rome on my honeymoon. And our flight was late getting in. We go and check in and my wife had booked a tour around Rome, which was amazing. I don't usually do like tours, but she wanted to do it and it ended up with me crying <laughs> when, I, when I saw the, the forum because I was like, this is the most amazing, you know, they, oh, they, cool. that the tour, whenever you go to a city, take the tour. Like if you go to a foreign city and you can do a walking tour, just take it. It yeah. will change your experience. And so uh, we get to the hotel and the tour was meeting in our lobby and they were like ready to go. And we were running in, check in, bring the stuff up. And it was like, it was like, um, early fall so it was like warm but it was like an hour and a half tour and by the end of the tour it was me cold 
but I didn't want my jacket, so I had to take a backpack and put stuff in it that I thought I might need. Right. Our wallets, our passport, our camera, all that kind of shit. So I had to dump my bag on the bed and then repack <laughs> it and whatever. So I came up with a backpack, a small backpack that clips onto a big backpack. Yeah. So when you get to where you're going, you unclip the small one. It takes 10, not even 10 seconds, boom, 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 it's in five seconds, it's done. And then you put it on and you go. And yeah. then your computer or whatever else you want to keep in your hotel room or wherever it is just stays there. That's one on pleatplius.com, it's the same one. Yeah, exactly, that's on pleatplius.com. Yeah. And so, uh, which- It probably weighs like four pounds or something. I mean, no, I think, I think it's like, two and a half i i know i know because i've weighed them but my point is that the small one yeah weighs more than a pound yeah and it's one of the and it's one of the lightest backpacks on the market so i got yours well that's also why it's 350 bucks i use like yeah. the lightest materials i could possibly find i even it's made crazy. a lighter version out of this like crazy fabric but only like psychos get it and shout out to those psychos because <laughs> it's great oh so you you've you've sold it to people yeah yeah i've sold Probably about a hundred of them. And you, uh, you have to be like an amazing sewer. I had to learn on the Se fly. Seamster. Seamster. Yeah. 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 I guess that's. Not, I'm not a seamstress. Seamster. No, you're a seamster, sir. <laughs> seamster. Um, that's crazy. Okay. That's yeah. amazing. But that was the other reason when I saw that you were doing that. I was like, all right, this guy is on TV drinking, making backpacks and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. We might be the only two people in the world. That, that have do, that in common? Yeah, yeah right, <laughs> Get exactly. Get on film and exactly. drink and make backpacks? So I was like, um, yeah. But I couldn't sew to save my life. I took a sewing class and I think I probably ended up with like more holes in my hands than I did <laughs> usable items. But um, I was doing my stuff overseas and then I changed to US manufacturing. Yeah. And I want to tell people, I want to, I want, I wish I could say that that was like, an amazing experience bringing the work back to the US. Yeah. But the fact remains, anyone who knows anything will, will confirm that this is true. The infrastructure does not exist. The professionals, yeah. the, 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 the expert seamsters, the seamstresses, the sewers are not here anymore. And it was a painful process. I went in there with my jacket, my, my adventure hoodie, and said, I wanna make this. And they go, this is too complicated. This That's would end up, what happened to me. He's too, like, this would cost out. 120 bucks to make. Yeah. And but we would need, we don't even have the technology to make certain aspects of this. And so we need to remove this, this. We can't do this. We have to use yeah, this it zipper. It some generic whatever. And then, and, and, then right. and it was still called the adventure, but it had like, it had the side pockets and then two a welted pocket here for the your beer and then a passport pocket and that was it. Hmm. And and it cost way more to make. So, and they were so late on delivering it's it's criminal to be honest with you wow. um and so i mean like they were supposed to deliver on like october 15th and they weren't done until the following september that's brutal because that's all on you too like what are my people who are waiting for it what can i sell what can i say yeah. I, I can't i can't really blame others it's i'm it's, the buck stops with me and of course i owned up yeah. to it but i'm like i really wish it wasn't the situation so now we make our stuff overseas yeah. Because the infrastructure is there. Hi. Do you see your salad? Yeah, I started eating it, oh, okay. and then I do this, and I'm going to finish it. But thank you, it's delicious. Okay, it's delicious. Yeah, all good. Thank you. So you what I learned it. too with this process, because people are always like, "Oh, U.S. manufacturing." When the I people started know, selling, sorry, I'm interrupting. Yeah. But people know that we're backstage. Did oh, we I guess set not. That up? No, we didn't even set that up. Sorry, let's <laughs> yeah. set this up. We're backstage. I'm doing stand up in Reno at a brewery called Record Street Brewing, and the stage is right out there. And they have a huge, beautiful venue, a performance venue, and then right next yeah, door incredible. attached is the brewery and the restaurant. And so we're in the green room, and the show starts in a few minutes. I mean, yeah. I don't know. That's like the, 15 minutes. The coolest thing of your tour, too, is just all breweries. You're probably the first person to give I that have a not show. come across. I would say definitively. Wait, did we finish the other thing about the U.S. manufacturing? Oh, I was just going to say, when I started selling my backpacks, yeah. like almost half of them were going to Thailand, Germany, Australia, wherever. And I'm like, so why does it matter if they're made in the U.S.? This is a global product. Like, people want them all over the... It's, 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 so I mean, Vietnam I, is probably the most I would love, efficient, Vietnam responsible is, place is to make Vietnam is where backpacks. I make my backpacks. Did oh, you know is? that? Yeah. I did not Vietnam know that. has some of the best manufacturing for backpacks and there's reasons but they they do an incredible job uh china 
you can also get it, get them made there. Um, at the end of the day, the fabric that you use in Vietnam is coming from China anyway. Um, there was a guy that was gonna make my bags and he was gonna make them in Vietnam. And the conversation ended with this conversation. He said, we can say they're made in the US. He goes, he goes I make golf bags made in the US. I have one company make the plastic insert I have another company make the fabric part of the bag. You tie a bow around it in the U.S. And Literally it, yeah. brings it to a, a place in North Carolina, puts them in four screws on the top, and then he puts made in the U.S.A. I'm like, yeah. we're, we're done. You know there's a Pittsburgh, China, so they could say made in Pittsburgh. Really? I forget how that whole story goes, but that's the that's, gist of it. Okay, yeah. that's amazing. Made in Pittsburgh, China. <laughs> made in Pittsburgh. Um, <laughs> so, but, but about the, uh, the tour, I have, I mean, I, this is, I think this is, Show 167. This is my second time doing this brewery. That's awesome. Uh, this well, you is, played here before. We played here. Yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, I signed a brick right above the door, oh, so I so know because it says it's. I think it says November 11th. Oh shit. Uh, yeah, 11 11 21. So we shot it in. Uh, yeah, so 11 11 21. So uh, about what eight? No no no. Ten ten months ago. Um, okay. And no there. There are breweries that have stand-up, but there's not like any tour that's moving through. But I don't know anyone else who could really do that because... Or why they would. It wouldn't be their like brand, if you want to call that it that. That would be the thing, yeah. Like, it's like a it lot of It seems like times, a hassle. I talked to, a, is it Trent? Yes, my, uh, the tour manager. Yeah. And I was just bullshitting with him about yeah. like different breweries in Florida. Why were you like, bullshitting? Why were you not being, why were you not being real? <laughs> it was real bullshit. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. shit, wow. Because I've been to... I don't know, over a thousand breweries. I went to 75 breweries in Florida like last year. I know you're playing there. But uh -huh. then I started thinking in my head, like my favorite breweries, I'm like, could you do stand up in there? Maybe right. for like 10 people. Right. And so that's like, got to be the hardest part. I just had an interview with um, uh, 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 Las Vegas Weekly, the newspaper and the website. And I was, because I have a show there on August 12th, Friday, August 12th. Will this come out before then? This might come out tomorrow. Guys. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, yeah, it's me and then yes. Um, so I'm doing House of Blues. That's, my, that's one, one of only three venues. There's, there's, there's two improvs yeah. uh, in Southern California and then one House of Blues. Uh, everything else besides that is a, is a brewery. But I was telling him that I was in Washington, D.C. Um, three weeks ago and it was 94 degrees out. And we had such a big crowd, we couldn't fit in their tap room, their tasting room. We had to do it in the brew house, which had plenty of space. Yeah. But it was so hot. We try <laughs> oh, not to. Yeah. We we try not to have that happen. And if it does happen, we'll we'll put that on like you know the the description of of Let the show. Know ahead of time. But like like we we want people to be comfortable. Yeah. We we've done we've done a bunch of outdoor shows. Um, every show that I did in Florida when I was there in June. Now I did, I did Florida in June because it was the only um, state that was wide open because from COVID. Right. And they're just like, you know, ignored it. And we went Let's through, go. sailed through, <laughs> yeah. and then when we were done, then it got hit hard. I was hard. there in Tampa when they won the Super Bowl. And it okay. was like the first time I'd been back in a bar and everyone was just like shoulder, it was like, I forget yeah. the name of the bar, Ferg's or something. There was like yeah. a thousand people there. Yeah, like, oh, and, okay. and, every, and, and, and then everyone got COVID. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so when we were there in June, which you don't necessarily want to do a tour of Florida in June. It rained every single day. And yeah. we were there for two weeks. Wow. And there was um, one show which was outdoors. There was a bunch that were outdoors. Most we were able to have indoors. But there's one at Ivanhoe Park Brewing in Orlando, which you probably went to. I'm not sure if I have it. Um, and they... Um, they were supposed to get tents, and then we showed up, and they didn't have tents. Like we, we think the weather, and they're like, we think the storm's gonna pull, gonna, gonna like pass us. And I looked. I always have my weather app, and I even took video of this. Here was the brewery, and the clouds were like this, and they were just circling. They were like going like this, <laughs> and I'm like, what is gonna happen? Like it looked like it, and then over here it's dissipating. And so we go up there. We did the show, and about halfway through the show, the heavens opened and it dumped, uh. and. There were tents around the outside. This is about 350 people. Yeah. And nobody left. They were all hiding under tents. And then oh, up nice. on the stage, the stage was on the loading dock. It was covered. So everyone was up there. And I was like, I'm not going to be up here covered when some people are staying in their seats. So I took my mic and I went out and finished the show 
in the rain in the audience. <laughs> and it was amazing. I wish that yeah. it was all on video. I mean, we have some photographs of it, but like... Yeah, I'm sure some people snuck their phone out or something. Yeah, yeah, we, we there, yeah. There's there's good photos. There's probably video. I don't know, but uh, yeah. um, but I, again, that's kind of like people were there because because I have a national brand, right? So I can go into a city like here, yeah. and I don't have to be local to be able to fill it up, right? Um, and then anybody who's a comedian, comedian, is probably going to comedy clubs. There's over a hundred comedy clubs in the U.S. Yeah, and so they're probably just doing that because that's just the way that it's done. For me. When I was starting to book this, the comedy clubs were not open, were not booking yet. So I was like, all right, let, let me just do breweries. And we started having conversations with like uh, AZ Wilderness, which we talked about before. And when yeah. I was at AZ Wilderness, when you brought it up before, yeah. that's when I was doing my equity raise to get investors for adventure. So I wasn't uh, okay. doing stand up, I, I was telling seeing. stories. That was my first, like... You were there? No, no, but I think that's when I was. Going back and forth with them about okay. going to film, and got then it. I saw that, and I was like, "Oh, shit, you yeah. do that too." <laughs> yeah. Man, you got to talk to uh, John Buford if you ever go back there. Yeah, um, he's one of the owners. Oh, okay. He's 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 a character. Um, they're one of these spots in Phoenix. If you bring up like, "Oh, I'm filming at breweries in Phoenix," they're like, "Oh, easy wilderness." Like, you know how you know when a brewery is crushing it. And by the way, there's this long debate about. I don't think it's even a debate, but it should be a debate. It's like people are like, someone asked me on stage one time, what state makes the best beer? And I was like, do you not understand how arbitrary your question was? And by the way, they didn't understand. Okay. I was like, I was like, it's not even what city makes the best beer or even necessarily what brewery makes the best beer because there's so many breweries out there that are crushing it, making amazing beer. Yeah. I can't say that, oh, this one by far makes the best beer. This beer is fantastic. Yeah. I, I don't know, I mean, I, I don't know how it could be better. You know what I mean? Like, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's very good beer. And the knowledge is the brewery industry, unlike any other industry, yeah. is uh, communal and they'll that's share it. knowledge. That's, that's like right. Some breweries, will sh a lot of breweries will straight up say, this is our recipe. Yeah, that's right. You want a home brew? Or Here's a home if, brew an, if another brewery runs out of hops across town, oh, it's yeah. not like, screw you. They're like, I will run I will run some hops over to you. I got you. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. There's no other industry. I, I, I challenge someone to tell me another industry that's like that. But. I thought about the same thing. Because it's porn? like brewery dishes. Maybe porn is like that. Porn? I think like, porn is like that, <laughs> and maybe church. Church. I don't know. I guess, yeah, I can't you know see what? churches like competing. I mean, church, what does got, that mean? What know. does that mean, church? Church, like, oh, you ran out of wine? Yeah, I got sacramental wine. Bro, I got you. I got you. I will bring the sacramental wine over. No, I bring that up all the time, and when I do the show, that's what I love. Like, Because breweries do collaborations. You'll never see like lawyers yep. like, oh, we're going to collaborate on this case. Like, again, again, porns. Churches, no. Porns, they will collaborate. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I don't want it to be. So when you come to a brewery like this, like you can probably drink only so many beers and you're not on camera, so you're not on pressure. Like I, I rewatched some of your, uh, just in the past week, like, you know, sometimes Which like, like what do you watch? Uh, the Switzerland one. Okay. Oh, four sheets. Four sheets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I watched yeah, some of those. Yeah, I, I hadn't seen those ones before. Yeah. That was for a channel called drink TV, which came out on September 1st. 2018 or 19 and went off the air September 12th of the same year. The network was on for 12 days. God damn. And we're just like, they, it's a long, it, it's not a long story. They, they, uh, they convinced me to do it because they said, look, it's, we have a two year run rate, which means we have enough money to fund this. Even if we make $0 for two years, I'm like, okay, that's, I'm in, yeah. I will like, I, I, I'm, people don't realize this, but they don't have to realize this, the magic of TV, that for an episode, it probably takes us about a month of pre-production, takes us about four or five days to shoot, and takes about six weeks of post-production, just the editing, the sound, the music, the, the, the graphics, the animations that I, I was, was put in really there. I was really impressed by rewatching the episodes, the graphics alone, because yeah. I'm just like, I watched something that lasts like, four seconds on yeah. camera, I'm like, fuck, that took all day. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, I mean, and they all take a long time. And and, uh, and so even to make the six episodes for four sheets, that was genuinely nine months of my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and then the network goes off the air and you're just like, okay, that's that sucks, but 
I mean, you know, you get people you, can watch it for free. I just watch you it can, for free. You can, you can. They're not supposed to. I mean, but they can. <laughs> if you go to zanelamprey.com and you click on four sheets, you can watch the episodes. Yeah, there. yeah. Well, I think it was actually back to what I was saying about getting pressured. Maybe it was a Costa Rica episode where you're drinking. What is it called? Like they're Guaro. Yeah. Yeah. And like I don't know. I don't know if it's the editing, but it looks like you just are slamming back so many shots of this stuff. Yeah, so I, 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 we would shoot for about four days, and I had what we call the hero night. And the hero night was when, you know, Christina was usually the producer, or Bert, and they're just like, hey, this is gonna be the one. I'm like, okay. okay. Because I, I was like, I can't, I can't give you, sometimes I would accidentally give two hero nights, but most of the time yeah. is like, you get one night where I'm going balls to so the, the wall. So the main thing about hero night is you have a loungy morning, or like a, a nothing to film the next a day A late morning, all. that's exactly right, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. They go, I go, what time's the shoot tomorrow? They say three, I go, okay, this can be ours. Because you just, because I don't want to hold back, I want to see where this where this train's going, you know? Yeah, yeah. Speaking of trains. Yeah, we got to um, <laughs> and, and so, yeah, we do that, and then, so that Guaro episode, yeah, that was definitely a hero night. We yeah. knew that walking in, and sometimes, it's just not a lot going on. Like, it's not instructive, right? Like, we're gonna go to a cool beach bar. What are we gonna do? They're like, I don't know. They got some beers, they have some cocktails, they have some guaro. There's another one in like St. Martin um, where uh, that was like um, a place called the Dingy Dock. Okay. And it was, uh, I don't remember the, the deal, but you, you poured, you paid a certain amount, I wanna say like five or seven dollars, and you poured your drink. You put as much uh, rum in it as you want, and you put as much Coke as you want, and there's different options, like whatever. And so you pour it yourself. And so that's what it was. And so wow. we knew that that was also gonna be. So there's yeah. a lot of those. In Prague, uh, we went to the, the, the Absinthe Bar. I think that was the start of it. And then oh, we went okay. out to another uh, place afterwards, and you can tell that I'm a little. I'm a little lit in that one. Well, yeah, and people want to be just so generous. Like, you're in their brewery, their bar, whatever, and they yeah. just, like, want to hear, hear, hear. And, they and don't I, know what you did earlier, what yeah. you plan on doing later. They're just yeah. like... And I want to make it um, an amazing experience for the viewers. My job is to entertain the viewers, and it ha every episode has to have that water cooler moment, something about it. They're, yeah. by, by the way, they're going to bring my opener up. Nah, not not, not me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and so... Um, I, I want to make sure that we have that whatever happens is amazing, you know. Yeah. And so I'm going to throw myself into it because I don't care if I feel like shit tomorrow. If we got an amazing scene that lives on forever, oh, yeah. Costa Rica, I probably shot that 12 years ago, and yeah. we're talking about it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. And, and that and that's why I did that. My buddy Steve McKenna, who came in and joined me for a few episodes of Three Sheets, but then definitely. And, and drinking that easy, he was it for every episode. He was the opposite. Whenever I still remember him chugging that beer at Stone Brewery and the dude getting so pissed. <laughs> Greg, Greg Cook. Did you interview Greg for your show? I've never met him, but okay. I just know I'm aware of him. Yeah, yeah. The Sapporo thing. Yeah. So it sounds like we're nearing. Yeah, I should, be yeah just stage. because I don't want to be like competing so with him. The last thing I just want to ask is yeah. are you going to, and you kind of alluded to it, you might do another show similar to I'm, that? I'm always, I'm always talking about doing another show. So I did my stand up. Yeah. My, my, my TV special will come out probably around Christmas. And I'm hoping that that lights the, the, the fire, the flame, yeah. to get another show going. People see the popularity of that. Yeah. So we're definitely always having those conversations. Um, you know, right now I'm on this tour because we can do, we can do these shows. Yeah. And, and then, you know, I'm, I'm booked solid until December. Then I'll shoot my second comedy special yeah. and then we'll start planning the next year and then also um, try to figure out if, if we work out a TV show in that component as well so hell yeah that's, that's well, always looking goal. forward to it yeah me too <laughs> well thanks for sitting down and, I will uh, thank you for hitchhiking from Wyoming <laughs> yeah yeah it's fucking amazing slept in the desert in Winnemucca <laughs> it was worth it you slept out in the desert yeah, right in, off. In, in your special tent, or no? In my special tent. <laughs> Do you have it with you? You're going to show me? Uh, yeah, I can show you. Okay. Wait, is it right there? It's right, yeah, it's grab, right there. Yeah, grab it. Yeah. <laughs> keep, keep rolling. This is your. This is the bag that you made? Uh, this one is a prototype that only I have, and I need to make a new one. But this one was cool because it's a backpack. Here, can you show them because you can see the light back there. So this yeah. And this one's like a specialty one just for me. 
And and these are the, the tent poles. Yeah, so this one actually is super quick. Um, oh my God. And just like that, it's a tent. So my head is up here. And that keeps wow. the, yeah, That's my feet are amazing. down there. And then this is, this is propped up so that you don't have something on your face. It's not right on my face. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. Keeps the bugs out, keeps the rain out. And then I have a jacket that becomes a, a fly. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> That's yeah. incredible. All right. Go enjoy the show. Thank you guys very much for watching this episode. Until next time, I'm Zane Lamprey. This is Kenny G. Cheers, Ken everybody. Kenny G. Kenny F. <laughs> yep. Thanks, man. Yeah. All right, that was Zane Lamprey. That was so cool. Right after, uh, like immediately after uh, that interview, he uh, got on stage and did a stand-up act, which I've never seen. I've seen him on the shows. Um, I forget how much of this we mentioned, but it, yeah, he's on Drinking Made Easy, Three Sheets. Uh, Four Sheets is probably, I, I guess, the most recent show he did, which is also like the same kind of format, going to uh, places and drinking, which you can watch all those episodes for free on uh, ZaneLamprey.com. Um, yeah, but I've seen some of those shows, but it was cool to actually see his stand up and, um, Nick Jerry, his opening act. Also cool. I talked to him afterwards. Super cool. Uh, I wanted to get into more of that with him just as far as like, how are you guys getting around? Like obviously, uh, Zane lives in LA. So like they fly out for a show or set of shows, but I was curious, like, you know, they're not hitchhiking. <laughs> like, what are you doing in between shows? And I guess, uh, they kind of do is they rent a car, makes sense. So I think uh, tomorrow they'll be driving to uh, Sacramento and um, on to the next show and uh, yeah, hotel rooms and stuff. Want to get into that more, but uh, it was cool just talking to Nick and hearing about that. I always thought like there's um, a similarity or I don't know, something I feel with uh, stand-up comedians. I don't meet a lot of stand-up comedians, but I always feel that like I get a sense that they have this sort of sense that I have, which is kind of unique about people and places. Like, they come to Reno and they know a little bit about Reno's, what Reno's about. Like, yeah, I live out of my backpack. I'm not getting on stage doing stand-up comedy, but um, I've got a real good sense of the country that I realize not a lot of people have, except for stand-up comedians. They are a unique perspective um, that I share, and it's uh, kind of cool. Something I, I like to dig into. A little bit more, maybe the next time I talk to Zane or the next uh, comedian, because not a lot of people do what we do. Maybe uh, to a certain extent, like flight attendants, maybe, I don't even know. But yeah, actually travel regularly and uh, sort of have a sense for the country, the world. Uh, so that was cool. So yeah, Zane Lamprey, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, let me catch you guys up on my travels. I'm lounging right now, I'm at the El Dorado, um, <laughs> which is like, Kind of crazy, because I'm like way up high. I'm in room 777. How nuts is that? Uh, I just, the girl liked me <laughs> when I checked in. So she gave me room 777, which is uh, obviously she did it on purpose, uh, but did not work out. I've lost most of my money since I've been here. So uh, including the few beers that I got at the venue tonight, I'm down to, if I shook all my piggy banks, maybe 30 bucks. That's a little brutal, um, <laughs> but I'm gonna be okay. I got a beer now. I got a free four pack from Revision. So yeah, since the last episode, I was in Wyoming and I had gone to Wyoming to go to my mom's wedding. She's gotten married for the third time. You know, summertime, my mom's probably getting married. Love you, mom. <laughs> it was awesome though. She got married in front of the Teton mountain range. It was incredible. A uh, small group of people there, maybe 20, 30 people. Absolutely beautiful. So I was hanging at her house. She's a camp ambassador up at Curtis Canyon outside of Jackson. So I kind of had the house to myself. I was finishing editing the hopping show on YouTube, which is done season two. You can watch the whole season. I think it's uh, 14 episodes is what it came out to. Absolutely awesome. And uh, what's cool is I got more episodes banked, so I'm not going to do like seasons anymore. Maybe I'll do another season eventually, but I think I'm going to do these like one off episodes. So the next episode will be coming out in the next week. And uh, just for you guys, I'll tell you. It's uh, going to every brewery in Mississippi in 24 hours. Y'all are the first to know. Well, whatever. Uh, it's going to be a good one. Really good one. Um, yeah, so I was there doing that. There for the wedding. Uh, hanging out. Going to Jackson Breweries. There's going to be a hopping episode about Jackson Breweries and stuff. 
but uh, pretty mellow, you know. A little hitchhiking back and forth between Alpine and Jackson, and then finally, yeah, I wasn't sure where I was going to go next, but Zane Lamprey um, was kind of the impetus to come to Reno because I, I kept looking at his tour schedule like, wonder when I'm actually going to cross paths with this guy, and I saw, oh, Reno, Sacramento. I was kind of thinking ahead in this direction. So I'm like, all right, this is perfect. So um, a few days ago, I hit the road. I left uh, Alpine, Wyoming, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to hitchhike to Reno. But uh, I, was, I was like antsy, ready, ready to go. So I left a little early, earlier, and um, I'm like, what's between Alpine, Wyoming, and Reno? Something interesting. Because if you're just going to drive between the two, that's like 10 hours. And hitchhiking, that's like two days. Um, there's some hitchhiking knowledge for you. If you don't know, I usually five, six hours hitchhike. It depends on how straight of a shot things are, but in my head I knew that'd be like two days, but I gave myself three days. And Boise was kind of the only thing that came to mind as far as in between. Yeah, I could have like shot down to Salt Lake, but that would have been out of the way. Even Boise was a little bit out of the way, but anything else is like not super exciting if you know the route, Idaho. So I'm like, I'll go to Boise. So Sure enough, I was correct, <laughs> and I got to Boise in a day. I hitched, it was uh, six rides to get there. Um, all good rides. Finally, somebody dropped me off right downtown, and I was like, why don't I go to uh, Barbarian Brewing? And then uh, I met this woman, uh, Stacy. She has this Boise Beer Buddies membership program, and she saw one of my hopping videos. Uh, that's how I'm in touch with her at all. She saw one of the hopping videos, and I'm pretty sure that's how we got in touch. And she's like, if you're ever in Boise, like, drop by, let's get a beer, and um, I'll give you a membership. So I was like, cool. And the membership is, uh, if you're around Boise, or even Reno, um, you sign up for this membership, and you basically get discounts at, like, all the good breweries and beer bars, like a dollar off or 20% off, whatever it is. And, um, yeah, it's like a why not situation. So I went to Barbarian Brewing, hit her up. She coincidentally was nearby. So we linked up, uh, drank some beers there, and uh, she played like beer tour guide for me. It was awesome. We ended up um, going to several breweries. Fuck, now I'm like hoping I remember the names of all of them. There's Twisted uh, something brewery that was really cool, and Idlewild. That's the one I really wanted to remember. Uh, it was this younger couple who uh, I guess owns the place, the dude's the brewer. Uh, maybe she helps brew too, I'm not sure, but super cool. And we were there like right when they were about to close, but the people there were awesome, like patrons, other customers, so cool. Uh, the beer is good too, like dude knew what he was doing, and that's the important thing. I think the vibe maybe is even more important, but it, the beer's gotta be good. They had both, so. Uh, yeah, so we probably ended up going to like four or five breweries, and then, um, I crashed at her place for the night, so that was convenient. I wasn't sure what I was going to do that night. I mean, I got it, my tent. The weather's good, so I wasn't really too worried about it, but obviously that's even easier. So she dropped me off at the highway in the morning, and it's like, all right, I got two days to get to Reno. And I probably could have gotten to Reno that day, but it's like, why would I show up here with nowhere to stay? Um, just because it's fucking Reno. It's... Uh, you know, city, so I'd just be wandering around and trying to stay up in the casino. So I ended up uh, getting a nice ride to Winnemucca on I 80 after a couple other rides. Dude, it was hot that day. I'll take a sip of beer just thinking about how hot it was. 107 degrees. And I'm usually like, I don't know, I'm okay with it, but I think just like so hungover. I borderline blacked out the night before, slept into like noon, one o'clock, like roasted. <laughs> you know, just gonzo and then in the 107 heat i was just like i was losing it i got picked up by one uh girl that day and her daughter it took me to sonic dude i couldn't even believe it I, d I hadn't eaten in like a day and she offered me food and stuff i'm like i just want a big cup of water she's like like i also got a cup of lemonade just to be polite <laughs> like i should have gotten food uh she was so nice her and her daughter and um but yeah 
So then she dropped me off at a gas station at the edge of Nampa, which is next to Boise, and I just sat there like a bum, <laughs> like in the shade next to the gas station, these two giant cups, one of water, one of lemonade. I sat there for like 45 minutes just like getting my composure, which is like unusual for me. Usually I just soldier through, but I was like, I need to, I need to move a little bit. <laughs> so chugged all the water, all the lemonade, um, and yeah, got one short ride. And then this guy, yeah, he was going to Winnemucca, uh, worked for like a chemical plant down there. And at, just before his sunset, he dropped me off at Winnemucca. And I kind of thought, should I keep pitching to Reno? But like, I did not want to show up to, to Reno at night, tired as fuck. Like, so what I did was I slept in the desert. That was a better move. Just like right off the highway, found like a hidden spot. Pulled out my bivy and um, he saw saw me pull out the bivy earlier. Um, yeah, and just um, slept there. It was a good night. It was warm, warm, and um, yeah, rolled down the hill in the morning. And uh, how many rides did I get? Two. I got. I thought I was gonna get one ride to Reno, honestly, especially when a truck finally stopped an eighteen wheeler. I was like, oh, for sure, this fucker is going to Reno or Sacramento or California, elsewhere. And I uh, know he was going to Furley, Fernley. It's like 20, 30 miles before Reno. I'm like, really, dude? But it, it was cool. He was awesome. Uh, he's from Moldova, uh, born in Russia, but lived in Moldova. Lived in uh, Vegas for the last five years, driving trucks. Uh, just a chill dude, about my age. Um, yeah. Dropped me off there. I'm like, all right, one more ride. Got the ride real quickly. It was this awesome girl. Um, fuck, I know, I, I'm gonna remember. So she was going to Reno to catch a flight to go to Gen Con, which is like a board game conference. And she's like invented her own board game, but mostly she like volunteers for these other board games. And I wish I could remember, I, well, I know I remember. Boop, boop. So I guess this doesn't come out maybe for another month if you're watching this in real time, um, August 2022. I have a boop. It's like a, and I get, she told me, I was like, where can I find it? Where can I tell people to like, she's like everywhere, <laughs> like anywhere games are boop. So it's a game about like cats and you're trying to like knock kittens off and like get three kittens together to make a cat. I don't know. It sounded like nerdy and fucking cool. So I was like, all right. I gotta remember that. And uh, the, her own game that she came out with, I can't remember, I'm sorry, uh, Brext or something like that. But um, I was like, this is very cool. This is a cool ride. And she dropped me off right here at El Dorado. So those of you who, who know me, been watching this show for a long time, know that I have a history of being a degen <laughs> gambler, which gets me uh, free rooms from time to time. Uh, goes in waves over the years. I'm riding the wave right now. Um, yeah, so I got a free room for a few nights here at El Dorado, knowing I'd be doing the thing with Zane uh, at Record Street Brewery. And uh, yeah, it was so cool. This girl dropped me off right in front of the casino. So checked in, and here I am. <laughs> and I got some beer. Super stoked, so I came in here, and um, I wasn't sure if I'd gamble or not, but... Fucking awesome girl at the front desk. Checked me in the room 777. And she said on purpose. I looked down and I was like, is that my room number? She's like, yeah, I did that on purpose for you. I guess it's because we were bantering back and forth. And um, yeah, I was like, hmm. I'm down to like a few hundred bucks in my life, which is serviceable. You know, I can get by in 300 bucks. But I'm like, Maybe I should try to up this to five or six, and then I really got nothing to worry about for a couple months. That was dumb. Um, so, yeah, I lost a couple hundred bucks right away. So I'm down to like a hundred bucks and change, which is still nice. Um, I was even able to get a bunch of like all you can eat sushi. I didn't eat for like two days while I was hitchhiking, um, which is like kind of unusual for me. You'd probably think, like, even if you watch this channel or listen to this podcast a lot, maybe that happens a lot. But usually I don't go, like, two full days, like, 50-plus hours without eating. But I did, so all-you-can-eat sushi and 
he was hanging around. And um, yeah, then last night, I uh, walked over to Revision Brewery, which is a shout out to them because they actually uh, gave me a four pack of beer on the way out. They're like, like what you're doing, <laughs> like the show hopping and stuff. And I'm like, fuck yeah. I was like, oh, damn, that's like borderline celebrity treatment. <laughs> I was stoked. But by the time I got back to the room, I was like, what if I could <laughs> take a hundred of my hundred forty bucks and uh, come up in the world and be like a three hundred dollar heir? So fuck that up. I lost a hundred bucks last night, so I was down to forty bucks. Um, yeah. So I went and uh, recorded what you just saw with a uh, Zane, and uh, obviously while I was there, I got a few beers. So now I'm down to like twenty ish dollars. So. I potentially got some money coming in. Um, I'm not super worried, and you know, money comes out of the air. And by that, I mean like I could meet someone tomorrow who's like, "Help me do this," and I'll give you a hundred bucks. Like that happens. Um, but it does mean I can't really go to a brewery and get two or three beers <laughs> with twenty bucks. Like, yeah. So I gotta be I gotta be careful for a day or two or a week or two. Um, luckily, I've got a bunch of food. I've got some tuna. <laughs> I've got some Ritz crackers and a jar of peanut butter over there. So, like, as long as I'm not stupid, um, I should be good. But I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Um, after meeting uh, Zane today and just uh, seeing how cool he was and the crew that he was with, like, that was awesome. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. That's how I'm freestyle traveling. And uh, I got tonight, obviously, in this room which is cool. <laughs> I'm probably the only person staying at the El Dorado who's like down to 20 bucks, has a jar of peanut butter, and is going to walk to the highway and stick their thumb out tomorrow. I'm definitely the only person who fits that description. But uh, I think I'm going to go to Sacramento. Um, I just got a text from Aaron. What's up, Aaron? Maybe I'll be watching this with you. Um, you son of a bitch. Aaron let me lose all my money last night. I texted him specifically. No. <laughs> I texted him every step of the way. I went down there with a hundred bucks and I was like, dude. He's like, don't do it. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I'm going to get up to 200 and I'll text you. And I got up to 200 right away. Playing blackjack. And he's like, walk away. And I was like, cool story, dude. <laughs> and then just lost all my money because I'm an asshole. Um, but I'm still alive. That's cool. So that's it. That's it, you guys. Um, take a breath. Take a sip of beer. Um, yeah, I guess I should mention with all that shit, like, y'all get on the Patreon if you want to. Um, actually, that's what I said. Like, there's some stuff coming. I'm about to get a Patreon check, which isn't a ton. But any of you guys listening, watching, watching, you can get on my Patreon. I think it's patreon.com slash Kenny Flannery. I post some like bonus content on there. Uh, everything from my beer show to this. This extra pictures. I post all the normal stuff too, like podcasts and stuff. It's basically just a way to like support me. Throw me six bucks a month. Throw me 20 bucks a month. Whatever you want to do. If you give a shit, you can get on Patreon. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to stay away from Vegas and Reno for a while. So I won't be throwing the money away. It'll actually be going towards beer. Like a good gentleman. Um, yeah, or you can get on the website and click the Amazon link and do all that stuff. But um, yeah, you guys, I'm feeling extra good. I'm feeling great. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And yeah, I basically just decided uh, right before I got on here that I'll probably go to Sacramento tomorrow. I have no idea idea what I'm going to do after that, beyond that. Um, I've got ambitions, dreams. But just gonna let the road do what it does it's always the best decision <laughs> and just have the stuff in the back of my mind central america argentina chile uh, maybe trimming weed later this year maybe not i don't know that's the beauty of uh the way i chose to live life is just uh letting things happen so fucking hey you guys cheers and drink some beer and I will see you down the road. With
shit straight, I'll get my big brain.